physicsinfo.co.uk Another in the series of physics GCSE tutorials. Combined Science Topic 10 Electricity There is no additional content for the separate science course, starting with the structure of the atom. Atoms themselves are made from smaller particles. They have a dense central nucleus surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. The nucleus is tiny, more than 10,000 times smaller than the atom itself, so the atom is mostly empty space. The nucleus consists of nucleons, positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons. All atoms are made from these three particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. Universally, symbols are used to represent the components of a circuit. And the ones on this page are the ones you're expected to know. Battery, voltmeter, ammeter, lamp, etc. And circuits can be built in one of two ways. In a series circuit, each component follows on in the same path. So one item after another after another. In a parallel circuit, the two paths run adjacent to each other. So current can go through either the first lamp or the second lamp. The total current going into the parallel circuit measured by ammeter A4, is shared between the two branches of the circuit. So A2 plus A3 is equal to A4. But the current going out is also equal to the current coming in. So A4 equals A1. Potential difference, sometimes called voltage and measured in volts, provides the push that makes electrons flow around a circuit. It's defined as the energy transferred per unit charge, hence the definition of the volt as a joule per coulomb. So if by definition the volt is a joule per coulomb, we can rearrange this equation to find energy, and we'll find that the joule is a coulomb times a volt, where the joule is energy, coulomb is charge, and volts is a measure of potential difference. There are many small electrical devices in everyday use. All have three things in common. A source of electrical energy, a path for the electric current, and a component that uses electricity to work. Connecting them together creates a circuit. Switching on causes an electric current and the component works. Electric current is a flow of electrons. Electrons are negatively charged, and so they travel away from the negative terminal and towards the positive terminal. This model helps explain what happens in a circuit. The escalator represents the source of electrical energy, like a battery. It gives the charges potential energy by lifting them to a higher level. The paddle wheel represents the electrical component, like a light bulb. As the charges pass the wheel, they turn it and fall to a lower level, losing potential energy. All the electrons return to the escalator, where they gain potential energy again. Current is the amount of charge passing a point in one second. It's measured with an ammeter. In our model, the current is the number of electrons passing the paddle wheel per second. Voltage is the amount of potential energy the electrons are carrying. In our model, voltage is represented by the height of the electrons. The voltage between two points in a circuit is measured by a voltmeter. Here, reading the lower scale, it's 12 volts across the bulb. There are different types of circuit. Bulbs can be connected together one after the other to form a continuous loop. This is called a series circuit. 
old-fashioned festive lights like these were wired in series and connected directly to the mains. But not all circuits are series. Connect each component directly to the power supply and the result is called a parallel circuit. Here, there's more than one path for the current. Modern low-voltage halogen lamps are connected in parallel, powered from a transformer. In series, watch what happens to the brightness when more bulbs are added. What happens to the brightness if more bulbs are added in parallel? To understand why brightness varies in the series circuit, we need to consider the current. With one bulb, the current is 0.4 amps. Add another bulb and see what happens to the current. The current is halved. Adding a third bulb reduces the current further. Bulb brightness depends on current. As the current falls, the bulbs get dimmer. To investigate current in a parallel circuit, consider our circuit with one bulb. This time the current leaving the supply is 1.5 amps. The current returning is also 1.5 amps. Watch the ammeters carefully as a second bulb is added. The total current has doubled to 3 amps. Because the bulbs are equally bright, each bulb is taking 1.5 amps. Adding a third bulb results in 3 times the current of a single bulb. The total current is 4.5 amps. Each bulb has its own path to take current directly from the supply. That's why bulbs in parallel are equally bright. Finally, let's consider voltage, first in a series circuit. The total voltage of the supply is split between the bulbs. The voltages across each component add up to equal the total voltage of the supply. What about voltage in parallel circuits? In parallel circuits, the voltage supplied by the battery is the same as the voltage across each component. You can think of each component as being directly connected to the battery. So a short recap of basic circuits. The current, given the symbol I, is measured in amps and in series with the component using an ammeter. Current is defined as the rate of flow of charge. And charge is given the symbol Q, measured in coulombs. Rearrange this to get Q equals IT. There is a law that states that the total current going into any junction is equal to the total current leaving that same junction. And electrons in metals flow from the negative to the positive. They're attracted by the positive. But by convention, we do it the other way round. Potential difference is given the symbol V and is measured in volts. It is measured in parallel with a component using a voltmeter. The volt is defined as a joule per coulomb. So if you arrange that, you'll get energy is equal to charge times potential difference. And you need a PD in order to be able to make a current flow. Ohm's law shows how the current in the circuit varies with the resistance. It results in an equation which says the potential difference is equal to the current times resistance, or V equals IR. So for the same potential difference, as the resistance increases, the current will decrease. So let's start by looking at how we can put together an experiment to look at the I versus V characteristics for a lamp. We collect the equipment and start by connecting the lamp directly to the power supply simply to make sure it's working. We measure the current in the circuit by placing an ammeter 
in series with the lamp. So you have to break the circuit in order to insert the ammeter. The power will go from the power supply to the ammeter, from the ammeter to the light bulb, and from the light bulb back to the power supply again. And again, switch on just to make sure the circuit's working. Now, we want to measure the potential dropped across the lamp. And to do this, we put a voltmeter in parallel with the lamp. So we don't need to break the circuit. We just connect the voltmeter from one side of the lamp to the other side. Ammeters are connected in series and voltmeters are connected in parallel. Again, switch on to make sure everything's OK. The power pack has a dial which allows a change in the potential difference being provided. This dial lies to you. Measure the potential difference using the voltmeter. Measure and record the potential difference. There are six dial settings, so you should get six values for potential difference and six values for current. These should be recorded in a table. It's worth mentioning that digital meters can be connected in reverse, hence the negative sign on the voltmeter. Ignore this negative sign. Once you've obtained the results, you could repeat them or just switch off once you've finished. Your results table should look something like this, with columns for potential difference and current, and perhaps later on a calculation of resistance. Decide whether to use a portrait or landscape format. In this instance, it's almost certainly better to do it as portrait and draw the axes on the graph. Choose sensible numbers. Along the bottom, it will probably go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. The independent variable goes along the bottom axis. And as you turn the dial on the power supply, it's reasonable to assume the potential difference will be the independent variable. Therefore, the current measured will be the dependent variable up the side. With these results, the spaces are going to be every 2 volts along the bottom and every 0.2 amps up the side. Give the graph a title and start to plot the points. Don't forget that 0, 0 will be a valid point because if there's no potential difference, then no current will flow in the circuit. Having plotted the points, try moving the graph paper so you look down the line towards zero, zero. The shape of the graph should be very obvious. Draw a line of best fit, that's a smooth curve or a straight line going through as many points as possible. And finally, here's a set of results obtained by a student. You can see that there are two probable anomalies which have been circled and not included in the line of best fit. Measuring the current flowing through a lamp and a resistor and the potential dropped across them are part of a core practical. In this video, we're more interested in the technique than in the results. So, using the same circuit, we replace the lamp with one of three resistors, resistor A, B and C. Starting with resistor A. Again, we switch on the power supply and record the values obtained. Turning the dial on the power supply, we can obtain five more readings of potential difference and current. Stop the video and record these if you wish, 
but a full set of results can be found on the Core Practical video. Here are the results obtained in a table. Repeat for resistor B and again for resistor C. These results can then be plotted. Here are the results obtained by a student for resistor A, B and C and plotted on the same graph. The gradient of each line can be related to the value of the resistor. Simply replacing the lamp or the resistor with a diode isn't quite so simple. The diode draws a much smaller current, so I have put together a potential divider. The potential divider gives greater control over a small range of voltages and currents. And rather than using a simple basic diode, we are using a light emitting diode that shows whether the current is flowing or not. The large coil is used to split the potential and the slider along the top gives a very controlled range of voltages. The currents are small, so a milliameter is placed in series. So this is the circuit, with a voltmeter placed in parallel and an ammeter in series again. Switch on, change the values of voltage and current, and plot a graph, just as we did with the lamp and the resistor. Here are a set of student results, noting that the current only flows in one direction. We have already seen the equation V equals IR, which we said was Ohm's law. And therefore, a graph of I versus V will give us a gradient of 1 over R. 1 over R inconveniently because potential difference is plotted along the bottom and is the independent variable. So the gradient of the graphs for the lamp and for the resistors is 1 over the resistance. The lines show, therefore, that the resistance of a resistor is constant whilst the resistance of the lamp increases with increasing current, and as the current increases, so does the temperature. Hence, the line drawn for the lamp is a curve. You are expected to know the I versus V characteristics for a lamp, a resistor, and for a diode. A diode just allows current to flow in one direction. In addition, you should know how the resistance changes in a thermistor and a light dependent resistor, an LDR. And here are the I versus V characteristics. For the filament lamp, as V increases, I increases. But it's not a straight line, it's a curve because as the current increases, the temperature increases, and as the temperature increases, so does the resistance. A diode only allows current to flow in one direction. So if the potential difference is negative, current will not flow. Once a positive threshold is reached, uh, the voltage increases proportionally with the current. The I versus V characteristic for a resistor is a straight line going through the origin. This means that current is directly proportional to the potential difference applied. Looking at the resistance of a light dependent resistor can be done in a number of ways. In this instance, there is an external light source and the light is limited by a plastic tube. That cuts down on background radiation. 
the current and potential difference are measured and the resistance calculated. The light intensity is varied by adding a number of sheets of paper and you can then plot a graph of resistance against number of sheets of paper added which would be the same as resistance against decreasing intensity. Another method would be to measure the resistance directly using an ohm meter and the light intensity using a lux meter. So this is set up with a light intensity meter connected to the computer and you change the distance from the light source which changes the brightness of the light and you measure the resistance at each point as well. The experiment is done in a darkened room to reduce the impact of any stray light or background radiation. It's worth noticing that the light intensity and the resistance are measured at the same fixed distances. That makes direct comparison reasonable. And here are a table and graph of a student's results. The mister is a component designed initially to decrease its resistance with increasing temperature, the opposite of other things, in order to keep things stable like radiograms and old television sets. The grey box contains a thermistor and we're going to measure the resistance directly using an ohm meter. The temperature will be changed simply by adding hot and cold water. A thermometer is used to measure the temperature but they are slow to react and a data logger would probably give you more reliable results. Record the value of resistance for a range of temperatures and put them into a table. As always, you should aim for at least six sets of results and repeat where possible. And yet again, here is a set of student results and a graph. Looking at these two graphs of resistance, you can see that they both have similar characteristics. As the light intensity increases, the resistance of an LDR decreases. As the temperature increases, the resistance of a thermistor also decreases. The rate of change of resistance is highest in bright light for the LDR and at high temperatures for the thermistor. And these characteristics mean that an LDR could be used, for example, to turn the flash of a camera on automatically. And a thermistor can be used to control a boiler or a fridge. If you think of a wire as a hollow tube, then the potential difference is attempting to push the electrons along that tube. Resistance is a constriction in the tube. And then finally, those electrons are transferring energy as they go through that constriction, causing the tube to heat up. Electrons traveling down a wire collide with metal ions in a lattice. And these collisions mean that the kinetic energy of the electron is converted into thermal energy. And it's that thermal energy that heats the wire. Low resistance wires have fewer collisions, therefore they get less hot. Electrical power, measured in watts, is current multiplied by potential difference. P equals I times V. Electrical energy transfer, in joules, is the product of power and time. So in this case, E equals I times V times T. Or you can rearrange that to power is energy over time. Current is doing work trying to get through a resistance. And that transfer of electrical energy into heat energy doesn't have to be wasted. For example, a room heater uses the electrical energy to heat the room. 
or a kettle element uses the electrical energy to heat water. Electrical energy transfer. Previously, we saw that power is the product of current and potential, P equals I times V. But also, knowing that V equals IR, we can substitute, and the equation then rewritten is P equals I times I times R. In other words, P equals I squared R. With an alternating voltage, the charges constantly change direction. UK mains is an example of AC. With direct voltage, the charges flow in one direction only, such as a cell or a battery. UK mains is 230 volts, 50 hertz, AC. In other words, the charges go backwards and forwards 50 times a second. Most UK supplies now come from underground, where the live wire brings the energy in and the neutral takes it out again. Each house has a box where the power comes in. This box usually contains a meter and some fuses. Wiring distributes the current throughout the house. The fuses are there to protect the appliance. If too much current flows, the appliance could be damaged and it may even cause a fire. Old-fashioned fuses consist of a wire which melts if the current flowing through it is too high, as in this example. More modern circuit breakers respond more quickly and are much easier to reset. Power leads inside the house contain three insulated wires the blue or neutral, the brown or live, and a yellow and green earth wire. The earth wire provides an easy route to ground, usually through a pipe by the front door. If you're careless enough to cut a lead, current will flow from the live to the earth or to the neutral. But if you're particularly unlucky, then the current can flow from the live through your body to earth. That's why we need switches and circuit breakers on the live wire and good earthing that provides a route to ground without going through your body. And that's it. Thank you for watching.